Hello, it is Janae Paylat, and we are on Facebook Live. Um, today, we're going to be talking about your sexual blueprint. I was on yesterday, and um, I it was my very first time on Facebook Live, and I told everybody at the time that it was my intention to start to do this on a weekly basis and my intention is to do it on Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and uh, we're going to try that. So um, what I want to be covering and talking about today is what is a sexual blueprint and how do you um, figure out what yours is and how it impacts your life and your sexuality and your intimacy. So, hello, hi John. Uh, so let me start by talking a little bit about um, what a sexual blueprint is. I like to say that a sexual blueprint is similar to and architectural blueprints. You've all seen architectural blueprints. I built a couple of different houses and renovated apartments and they're blueprints, right? And the blueprints are very specific. It has very specific information on where the walls are and where the do doors are and where the kitchen is and where the bathroom is and it has all the plumbing and the electricity and it really forms the foundation for the house so that all of the builders and all of the subcontractors know what to do and you know what it's really going to look like. And in a similar way, we have blueprints as well. And our blueprints around intimacy and relationship and sexuality come from basically three different aspects, three different areas of our life. Uh, and I'm probably just going to talk about one of them today, but I'm just going to mention what all three are, and then um, that may be uh, information that we'll be focusing on in the next one. So the three areas are, first of all, how awake and aware are you with respect to your body? What's your level of body awareness and awakeness? And this is really important because it governs how comfortable you are in your sexuality, in your body, right? Our sex happens in our bodies. It doesn't actually happen in our heads, although our brain is a really big sex organ and um, it does involve, it gets very involved in, in sexuality as well. But really sex happens in our body and I really like to focus on embodied sexuality and I'll talk about that uh, as well at another time. But that's a really very important issue. And whenever I work with um, anybody, we always start by figuring out, well, what is your level of body awareness? How comfortable are you in your body? Are you comfortable in your own skin? Are you able to feel sensations? Are you able to notice what's happening in your body? That really helps you be able to be more comfortable around your sexuality, but it's a really big part of your sexual blueprint. And a lot of these issues, in fact, all of the issues that we're talking about don't start as adults. They start way back in our childhood, right? So our connection with our body, our connection with our sexuality starts way back um, in childhood. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in just a minute. So that's the first thing. How aware are you around your body and your level of um, awareness? The second piece of it is, um, and this is what we're really going to focus on today, are what are the messages that you received around relationships and sexuality and intimacy as a child? And these messages come from a variety of different people. The messages come from our parents, from ad other adults, from siblings, but they also come from society in general. 
and uh, religious and cultural institutions. These are very, very critical in understanding this aspect of our sexual blueprint and how we relate to how our sexual blueprint impacts our relationships and our adult sexuality. And the third piece of the this sexual blueprint or this intimacy and relationship blueprint is understanding what your adult attachment style is. And attachment style is a psychological word that was um, first identified in the 60s by John Bowlby. And it's really related to the relationship between an infant and their primary caregiver. Uh, but it also follows us into adulthood. And it's a fascinating uh, subject. I write a lot about it. Hello, Marwan. Hi, Ivan. Um, I, I write a lot. I'd love if you guys would send me some hearts. I have no idea where to find them, but it would make me very happy. It would make me smile. Um, I write about it uh, and talk a lot about it um, uh, with respect to intimacy and how it is that we relate to, thank you, <laughs> thanks for the heart, uh, how it is that we relate to um, our intimate partners, whether it's female partners or male partners or both, like how we actually relate is very much related to our adult attachment style, which has is impacted from birth in our childhood, but there are other factors that also can affect what our adult attachment style it is and therefore how comfortable we are in intimate relationships. So there's three factors that impact your sexual blueprint, how awake you are, how aware you are in your body, what the sexual messages were, the messages that you received around sexuality were as a child, and then finally your adult attachment style. So let's focus on the sexual messages and the sexual blueprint perspective. Um, and uh, as I do this, I'm going to um, give you uh, an example and a couple of different examples, some from my own life and some from work that I've done with other people um, around the impact of our sexual blueprint. So let me start talking about, whoops, the types of questions for you to think about when we talk about sexual blueprint. And I actually have some notes. I know you're not supposed to have notes on Facebook Live, but I do because I'm Janae. Um, and I, I actually have this little questionnaire in my um, Intimacy and Relationship Blueprint Guide, which if you'd like to get a copy of, you can go to my Power of Pleasure Facebook page and you can download it or you can opt in to download it from there. Um, there are a couple of questions that I... Uh, want you to consider and here are some of them so how much or how was or was sex even <clears throat> excuse me talked about in your household growing up was sex a taboo issue where you know somebody put their hands over your eyes or their hands over your ears or was were, did you grow up in a household where people were, um, where sexuality was actually freely talked about. And it varies, right, from situation to situation and person to person and household to household. Some questions that you can ask yourself is, did you ever see your parents kiss in front of you? Now, most people tell me, oh yeah, my parents like would, you know, give each other like a peck on the lips or a peck on the cheek. But I'm actually talking about, did you ever see your parents give each other maybe a little bit more of a passionate kiss, a more romantic kiss, right? So that's one question to look at. Another one to consider was um, how open were your parents in terms of cuddling and allowing you into their intimate space? Were you allowed to crawl into their bed and you know cuddle with them in the morning or cuddle with them at night? Some people, this was just a normal part of the way in which you grew up. And for other people, it was uh, really unusual. The touch is something that actually never happened for a lot of people. Um, what about your experiences around masturbation? This is like a really big issue and it shows up so much more frequently 
than we think it's going to show up. But, you know, for a lot of us, we have had a lot of shame around masturbation, and it could be for a variety of different reasons. It may be that you were caught masturbating as a child. This is super common for little kids in three or four years old to be caught masturbating or even a little bit older and feeling really, really shamed for it. One of my clients um, talked to me about an experience where her mother walked into her when she was masturbating in the bed. And honestly, she never really was able to get over that. She had a lot of issues around touching herself. And that was definitely happened because of early issues around masturbation. How did you feel as you started to grow up and become grow into your sexuality when you were in puberty, when you were, you know, 10, 11, 12 with budding breasts and budding penises and what how did your how did your parents deal with your sexuality, with your puberty? Were they open about it? As a woman, a woman, a lot of women mothers, right, certainly from my generation, were not very open and weren't very helpful and did not um, offer really good advice and sympathy or compassion or maybe even as we do now, there's like a celebration, a joy when a woman first has her period because she's entering a new stage of womanhood. That did not happen when I grew up in uh, in, in the 60s. And um, there, for a lot of women, we hold a lot of shame around that issue. And we, we have felt a disconnection from our body that periods are dirty and blood is bad. And that, that carries over into how we feel about our relationship with our body, our relationship with our sexuality, and our relationship um, with uh, our private parts. I'm trying to be careful. I'm not sure what words I'm allowed to use on Facebook and not, so I'm trying to be super careful about that. Um, and then often, as we are still in adolescence, there are other issues that really have a huge impact. So I see a lot of men, and this is super common, right? Men who have you know, body shame issues about the size of their penis. And, you know, very frequently, a lot of this started in uh, high school, in the locker room, or even in junior high school when they got teased because they hadn't quite gone through puberty yet, or they just got teased about their, the size of their penis. In addition, we also see um, that, you know, there are men, and some of you guys may have this experience as well, right, that there are men who... Uh, as young boys, you got erections at, um, shall we say, inconvenient times. And whether somebody else, like the girl that you got the erection because you were looking at saw it or a teacher actually saw it or not, you felt that in your body. You felt that embarrassment and that shame. And that still lives with us as well, right? So there are all of these ways in which these you know, early, early childhood sexual experiences. Hello, hello. Hi, Karen. Hi, Marin Polly. <laughs> How are you? Um, in which they really have an impact on us and have an impact on the how we feel a, as a sexual adults and what our relationship is to our body. So I'm going to give you my, I'm going to talk here about my own experience around this, and it's super, super vulnerable to share, but um, I've shared it before in public forums. Um, for me, what happened was when I was young, like seven or eight years old, I had this dog. He was uh, a Yorkshire Terrier. His name was Lucky, and he was this like yappy, neurotic dog, and I kind of had a love-hate relationship with him. Uh, and mostly I didn't like him because he was nippy and he bit me and he, he just really made me very uncomfortable and anxious. The love part of the relationship was that he, at, late at night, would, like to, would often jump in my bed and I guess get under the covers with me or maybe I was above the covers and he would start sniffing 
my private parts. I'm going to call it my yoni, right, which is the tantric word for vulva. But he started sniffing my yoni and eventually he started licking it. And I was like maybe seven or eight years old. And of course, it felt really good. It was a really delicious experience for me. I experienced a lot of pleasure from that, which is what would happen, right? At the same time, I knew that there was something that wasn't right about this, like this was bad. And I was worried about my mom who was, you know, we lived in a small townhouse and her room was like two doors away, maybe 10 feet away at most, um, finding out about it and walking in on me and getting punished. And when this happened, you know, she didn't, she never actually walked in on me, but I had a lot of anxiety. And so what happened for me was that my anxiety was married, if you will, with my pleasure. So it made it me very uncomfortable and I started associating genital pleasure specifically from, you know, some oral stimulation happening on my genitals with fear and anxiety. And I didn't realize, of course, at the time that there was this imprint that was happening, but that was actually what was happening. There was an imprint that was happening on my body around sex in this way. And... Um, So fast forward, right, to me becoming a a sexual adult and always having problems and issues around oral sex. So whenever I had oral sex in my 20s and all through my 26-year-old, 26-year marriage, most of which was not sexless, was sexless, I always had problems. I never really liked oral sex. There was something about it that felt uncomfortable. It felt wrong. I never had an orgasm and I rarely had any pleasure from it. And it really didn't realize until I got way into my uh, later, later years, like when I went through my own sexual awakening and healing, which didn't happen until my, my late 40s um, and, and early 50s, that you know the reason I felt this way was essentially because my body just started associating oral sex with anxiety and shame and fear. And that, that was my sexual blueprint around oral sex. And you can see how something that happened as early as seven years old carried all the way over onto my 50s. And it took me a really long time to be, to be able to get over this And even, honestly, to be able to admit that this situation happened because I always felt like there was something wrong with me that, you know, maybe I was into bestiality and it was incredibly hard for me because of all the shame that I had associated with it to admit this experience. Um, And I finally did it at a a spiritual retreat. And, you know, I started journaling about it and I was like, oh my God, this actually happened. And it still felt really horrible. And then I really couldn't get over it until I went to uh, another retreat many, many years later. And we were actually talking, it was about sexuality. And we were actually talking about these very um, shameful sexual experiences that we had as young children or, you know, whatever our shame was. And I was able to finally, through tears, Um, be able to share this story. And here's like the most amazing thing about this story. When I was finished, another woman in my group came over to me and she said, you know, I had something really similar happen to me with my cat who used to like to rub, you know, uh, rub between my legs and it felt really good for me. And I always thought it was really weird too. And here's that piece or that I was really weird too. Here's that piece where, you know, the way for us to start to deal with some issues that we have, this this sexual blueprint from these messages that we received comes into play because when we get to talk about it, when we get to actually share our experiences around ways in which we felt constrained and ways in which we felt shame, then 
it helps to normalize the conversation. Sorry guys, I had no idea I should have dislodged my phone. <laughs> Next time I will definitely know that when you do Facebook Live on your phone. Um, it, it helps to normalize the conversation and that's a really important way for us to be able to get rid of these beliefs that we have. And the other, other part I wanna say is that, so for so many of us, the messages that we received around sex, you know, what one message, for example, that many women receive is that um, pleasure is bad. You're not supposed to have pleasure. But for us to begin to realize that these messages are not, they don't have to be our beliefs. They're somebody else's beliefs. They're your parents' beliefs. There's the, there's the, it's the church's belief. But it's not necessarily your belief. It's just a message that you received. And when we start to grok that, it starts us to be able to say like, okay, yeah, right. That's the message that I received. I may have to work through that in my body. I may have to really process that, but it's a message and it doesn't have to be my belief. And I really have the ability to transform <clears throat> these negative beliefs that I have around my sexual blueprint into positive beliefs. So that's my story. I wanna share um, a couple of other, hey Lynn, how are you? Um, I wanna share a couple of other um, client stories around sexual blueprint and messages that people received because I think it's really illustrative of how this shows up in our current life. So um, I was working this, with this one client, was a woman, she was, maybe in her early, late 20s, early 30s. Um, and her background was that she was from, I think she was from Iran. So she was Persian, but mostly lived here in the United States. But I think her mother was actually from, uh, from, from Iran. And she came to see me because she was not able to have an orgasm, any which what way, by herself, with a partner. She just really wasn't able to experience it. And we'd done a bunch of work. And one day I, um, I was giving her some very, very light touch, which is sometimes something that I do with clients, uh, especially if I feel like they're really disconnected from touch and pleasure. And I was giving her some light touch, super gentle, just on her arm. And, you know, it had some sensual quality to it. And she started crying. And I asked her, why are you crying? What's going on? And as often happens when we get into this deep work, she just started reciting a story that she had, and this was the story. So she was about 10 years old, and she was with her mom driving in a car uh, down the freeway, and she looked out the window, and she saw to her right a man and a woman on a motorcycle. And the woman, who she said was really attractive and had long hair, was like holding on to her guy, right? And her hair was blowing in the wind. And she probably saw this from, you know, some sort of TV show or movie or whatever. That's like that very standard romantic picture, right? And she said to her mom, oh, something like, that's so sexy, or I wish I was that woman kind of thing, right? You know, basically indicating like she was turned on. And her mother's response was to slap her on the face, I guess while she was driving, and said to her, only, what did she say? Only sluts ride on the back of motorcycles. Only sluts ride on the back of motorcycles. So what happened for my client was when she was telling the story and she started to cry, is the message that she received from this incident and many other incidents as well, was that pleasure was bad. And she wasn't allowed to enjoy pleasure. And so when she started experiencing pleasure by feeling the touch that I was giving her on her, hey Jen, uh, uh, hi Robin, um, on her hands, right, on her arms, she became, you know, she basically, her whole body just froze because she was given the message as a child 
that she wasn't supposed to experience pleasure, that only sluts experience pleasure. Maybe the caveat was, if you're married, you can experience pleasure. But that was the message that she received. And that was the way in which her body took this message and imprinted it onto her, right? So another example of how this sexual blueprint, the messages that we received around sex, show up for us um, in our adult sexual life. Um, Let's see. Let me think about another client story that I can share that would be relevant as well. Trying to think about one about men because there's a lot of wonderful men on here as well. Um, Well, this was really, you know, similar to what I said in the beginning, but another client came to see me and we were working on some issues. And by the way, the woman, just so you know, because I'm, you know, some of you know that I'm writing a book. Actually, I've written a book. It's called Living an Orgasmic Life, Heal Yourself and Awaken Your Sexuality. Um, And I'm super excited about it, and it's going to be published in the fall. But what I've been doing, it it involves a lot of client stories. And so one of the comments I've been getting from some beta readers who have been reading it is, can you please make sure you let us know what happens in the end? So here's the end of her story. She did, after doing working working with me for a period of time, she was able to actually experience pleasure. And she had her first orgasm, and she sent me a great text, which I read out at some conference, obviously without her name. But um, so, so she was able to get over that block and start to feel pleasure. So another client of mine um, sort of had an interesting opposite experience. He grew up in a very, very sex positive environment, um, a way in which everybody sort of walked around naked in his house, and um, there was a lot of discussion around sexuality. And, you know, for him, that experience wasn't necessarily that positive for him, right? There's, sometimes there's this fine line as parents that we have to, I mean, there's lots of fine lines that we have as parents, but as parents that we have to really tread between being sex positive with our, our children or grandchildren and also like holding some boundaries as well. Um, And in this particular case, his mother would walk around naked in front of him. And, hey Peter, and it was um, confusing for him, especially as he got older and he started having arousal from seeing his mother walk around naked. And he told me about this one day when I think he was like in, what happened? He was on the bed, uh, in their room, watching television, something like that. And his mom walked in and apparently she was also, you know, very voluptuous and beautiful woman, uh, as he described it. Um, And I think part of his erotic, his, his erotic world, his core erotic world, Um, And she started, you know, changing because she was going out or something. And she was, I think she took her bra off and she put a new bra on and he got an erection. And somehow she noticed it. I don't know if he was naked. I'm not sure what it was. She noticed it. And she reacted in a way that at least certainly to me sounded from his description probably inappropriate because she kind of got turned on by it. So rather than maybe just saying, well, okay, I can see like you're excited, you know, that's what happens when you see a woman and maybe, maybe I need to be a little bit more careful around that. She kind of egged him on a little bit and um, it actually ended up causing a lot of issues for him as he grew up because he ended up becoming super, super turned on and eroticized by his mother, um, and it interfered with his ability to be in relationships with other women. He had lots of fantasies about having sex with his mother, Um, and uh, and sometimes he took those fantasies into his sexual relationships, which is fine, but it actually had an impact on him being able to be really connected with other women. So thank you for the heart. Thanks for the heart. Okay. So I think I've gone on and off, at least for me, um, 
about this issue around the messages. And um, what I just want you to think about for yourself, right? Because it's a really interesting exercise to do. And again, I want to encourage you, um, if you just joined, you can go to my either my website, which is powerofpleasure.com, or my Facebook page, which is also Power of Pleasure, and you can download uh, my, what's it called, Intimacy and Relationship Blueprint. And it has like charts and questions that you can look at yourself and um, figure out some of the issues around your own sexual blueprint um, and the messages that you received. It's a really interesting exploration um, and whether, you know, you have questions about your own sexuality, it'll help give you a much better sense of where your patterns around sex showed up. Because we all have different patterns around sex, and we all have different feelings about how connected or disconnected we are to our sexuality. And your sexual blueprint is just like a key guide to really understand it. So I don't think this can be very interactive Unless some, if somebody has a question, I guess there's a comment thing. I'd be happy to um, answer any questions that you have. I think you can just type in the comment place and um, I could respond or I would respond or I will respond. But uh, I'm not seeing, yeah, so there's a little comment thing. You guys, you know, I'm kind of new to this. Um, so that's it for today for, uh, I don't know, talking about sex with Janae or some sort of thing. Um, I'm going to be doing this every Friday at 10 o'clock, and um, I look forward to sharing more information and for you guys to post questions, um, and I'm happy to answer that. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful, fun, juicy, delicious weekend. Bye.